Good morning, everybody. Today's day six of daily vlogging, and today I thought I'd share with you my whole workflow. That's right, today I wanna to share with you guys everything from coming up with ideas, scripting, what cameras I've been using for these daily vlogs, how I've been filming them, and what kind of music I've been using, and how I do all my post-process editing. So, like I said, I am currently on day six of seven daily vlogs. If you guys haven't seen them yet, go back a few episodes and continue to look forward to the last one tomorrow. But I've always appreciated daily vloggers like Casey Neistat and I thought it would be interesting for me to experience what does it actually feel like to create a vlog every single day for a whole week straight. Going into this, I knew that my biggest challenge would be time because I knew that every day you gotta come up with an idea, start filming, editing the video, and then do that all over again every single day for seven days a week. So I wanted to come up with a workflow to help me film these videos throughout the week and make it possible. Step number one in my daily vlog workflow was brainstorming ideas or themes for each video. Going into this challenge, I knew that the biggest hurdle that I would face was just coming up with an idea for each day's video. I didn't wanna wake up in the morning and be like, what am I gonna make a video about today? Rather, I wanted to be prepared and ready to go to start filming. Because we all know that at seven in the morning when you wake up, your brain is just dead tired and it's not gonna be functioning the way you want it to be. So before I started filming this seven day daily vlog challenge, I actually just brainstormed a whole bunch of ideas or themes that I could talk about in each video. And the ideas actually came quite quickly. So I planned out seven videos, but then throughout the week, new ideas would come. So I would just figure out which video would I actually wanna film or not. But it was a good problem to have because I had more ideas than videos needed to be filmed. In some ways, I really enjoyed daily vlogging for this because you could have just one simple thought or idea for that day's video and you could share each day a different thought or idea whereas when I'm doing my normal content, I'm posting maybe eight videos a month and you wanna make sure those videos are big videos. So you have a lot more pressure to come up with a huge thought or idea rather than just sharing a small thought or idea that I could share in the daily vlog because they happen every single day. So it was no problem to just share a small thought for each daily vlog video. And to be honest, I kind of like that about daily vlogging that you can just share one small thought or idea and that's enough for that day's video. Whereas when I'm creating my normal content, I'm posting maybe eight videos a month. So you really want to make sure that every video counts and you want to make sure that it has a great thought or idea or you're teaching something or an epic camera review. And there's a lot more pressure on every single video. Step number two in my daily vlog workflow was scripting. Each day I wanted to make sure that I had a script ready for the next day's daily vlog so that I'd be ready to start filming when I wake up. Now for my daily vlogs, I definitely didn't write a script that's as detailed as it would be for my tutorials or gear reviews, but I still wanted to write a script just to give me some sort of structure and to help me figure out for the next day what kind of B-roll shots I'd need, where I'd need to film them, and also what kind of talking head shots. This helped me film exactly what I'd need for that vlog rather than just filming throughout the whole day and then having to cull through a whole bunch of footage. And as well, it helped my editor, Robin, because he would know exactly what the video is gonna look like based on my structure. Step number three was deciding the right cameras for these daily vlogs and the right camera settings. For my daily vlogs, I was using these two cameras, the Sony a7S III and the iPhone 14 Pro. Most often, I'd start off the day with the iPhone 14 Pro whenever I would leave the house because that way I didn't have to bring all this gear home and I would film those first vlog clips with the iPhone 14 Pro and then when I got to the office, I would switch over to the Sony a7S III just so that I would have access to a flip LCD screen because it is pretty hard to vlog yourself when you don't really know how you're framing the shot or what the lighting looks or what you look like. And as well, you're obviously getting a lot higher quality footage from the a7S III. On the Sony a7S III, I was really using these custom dials for my advantage. Basically, I would set up these three dials to have vlogging, B-roll, and time lapses. So for vlogging on the Sony a7S III, I had it on custom dial one, which meant that I had it at 25 frames per second and a shutter of 50 to get the 180 shutter roll, which gives you that nice motion blur similar to what your eye sees. Then for B-roll, I'll just switch over to custom dial number two, and that would be set to 50 frames per second and a shutter of 100. And then for time lapses, instead of having to go through the camera and do all these settings, I would actually set that to S and Q. So I would have a recording frame rate of 25 frames per second and a frame rate of one 
and that would then give you a nice time lapse, which is really easy to do. You just press record and voila, you've got time lapses in no time. So yeah, really helpful to have those three dials because just with a click of a button on the dial, I go from vlogging to B-roll to time lapses and that sped up the workflow when I'm filming my vlogs so much. So once I decided what cameras I'm gonna use for daily vlogging and what camera settings I would need, step number four was to start filming. Now, because I had a script, it really helped out with the whole filming process. Because basically, I always knew what talking shots I'm gonna need and what B-roll shots I'm gonna need in order to tell the story. Now, I of course always left some room for spontaneity throughout the day just to spice up moments, but essentially, I kind of knew what I would have to film each day in order to get the daily vlog done. Whenever I'd film B-roll sequences, I'd always make sure to film at least three to five clips varying in different focal lengths, wide, medium, tight, so that I would have flexibility in post when editing. And for the talking headshots, I always made sure that throughout the different points that I would change the angles just to change it up. Personally, I found that whenever you talk for a few minutes in one location, you're gonna lose the audience, so it's important to change the angle to re-engage your audience. But if you change the angle or the location, all of a sudden it re-engages yourself with the audience. If you don't have the luxury of changing locations all the time, a really simple way to do this is have one camera in the front like I just did, and then turn your head to the second camera and you can go back and forth like that, re-engaging the audience because the angle is changing throughout the talking headshots. It's super simple, but it definitely keeps the audience engaged. If you can't afford having two cameras, you can totally just fake it. You can film all the talking headshots from one angle and then all the talking headshots from the other angle just by moving the camera over here. And just make sure that when you're beginning and ending the talking point that you just tilt your head and tilt your head back to the different angles depending on which fabling angle you're doing. Hopefully you get what I mean. A little bit of a trick here, but it definitely re-engages the audience because you're changing the angle constantly. Step number five in preparing for my daily vlog workflow was music. I knew that if I didn't have music prepared for this challenge, I'd be struggling every single day trying to find the right vlog music or the right B-roll music or the right music for this certain emotion that I want to convey in the vlog. So what I did was I went on Epidemic Sound, which is a long-term partner of my channel and also the sponsor of this episode, and I went and downloaded all sorts of music that I thought would fit well for the vlogging portions of the video and then for the B-roll portions of the video. And then I have a few songs that I love to have for playful moments or for tense moments. So as you can see here on my screen, I have a folder for epic B-roll, talking shots, vlog shots, and then I have a funny playful scene song and a tense music song. For me, the vlogging talking headshot songs are usually like these chill hip hop, feel good songs I like to have just behind the talking or in the B-roll walking segments for a vlog. But then if I wanna have more epic slow motion B-roll, then I have songs like from Oi or AGST that just pump you up and just really feel that epicness to the piece. In order to find all the right songs for this daily vlog challenge, I loved using Epidemic Sound's browse features by searching for mood. And then they have this really cool feature where you can click on a song and click like similar or look for similar songs. And it's giving you a whole bunch of songs that have similar style, mood, and feel to the song. So that way, if I found one good song, for example, for the vlog sections, I could just click look for similar. And all of a sudden I found a whole bunch of other songs that I could immediately download and use for this process. If you guys aren't yet signed up with Epidemic Sound and you don't have a music licensing service, I would highly recommend using the link in my description because it's going to give you a one month free trial, which means you can literally try downloading all the songs you want, all the sound effects, test it out, see if you like it, and if you do, just continue the cheap and affordable monthly service for nine euros, I think. It's pretty dang affordable. So yeah, click the link in the description. One month free trial, you won't lose anything by trying it out. Step number six is editing. Depending on when I would finish filming the daily vlog, I would either start editing already in the afternoon or then the next morning. On average, it took me about two to three hours to edit each daily vlog, which in my opinion was pretty fast, and there's a few reasons why that was possible. The first reason, which I talked about before in step one and two, was planning ideas and scripting. 
Because I already had scripted out the idea for the video, I knew exactly what talking headshots I would need and what B-roll shots I would need, which made the editing process a whole lot faster because I didn't have to call through all this footage filmed throughout the day that maybe I wouldn't actually need to tell the story. Rather, I would just go through the exact footage that I needed for that video. The second reason was because of the music that I had downloaded beforehand. All the music that I had gotten from Epidemic Sound helped so much because I didn't have to go to Epidemic Sound before starting editing and look for songs. Rather, I already had a nice group of vlogging, talking headshots and a nice group of songs for the B-roll sequences and as well music for the playful moments and the tense moments. I was already prepared right away when I'd start editing and I didn't have to take that step to go and look for music because we all know that can sometimes take hours, especially when you're under stress. And lastly, I think why the editing process was so fast for me was because I already had all my different motion graphics and titles prepared in a template beforehand. That way, when I would go and edit each daily vlog, I would just copy and paste the different motion graphs into the next vlog, change some text, maybe it's the sizing, color, positioning, and voila, it was all done ready in a few minutes. All these motion graphics were from Motion VFX, which I love using on a daily basis. And in each daily vlog, I would have one opening title, uh, different motion graphic just to tell what vlog number and date it was. Then I would have a motion graphic for each song that I'm using, because I love to share with you guys what songs I'm using from Epidemic Sound. Then I had this cool before and after sequence for my LUTs, because I wanted to show you guys how I graded my footage and what it looks like when it's logged and what it looks like when it's graded. So I always had that ready for each vlog. And then I had the subscribe button. And if you aren't subscribed right now to my channel and you are enjoying this content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It would help me a lot out and you as well because you can stay up to date with my videos. And then lastly, I had the end screen annotation graphics. So I would have a little subscribe button and then follow me on my vlogging adventure and I would share the vlog from before and the vlog for the next day when it's released. So this is a really cool way for me to just have these motion graphics ready in a template, drag and drop into my new daily vlogs and voila, in a few seconds, they were ready. The reason why I love using Motion VFX in all my projects is that they're just so customizable. Whenever you drag and drop a different motion graphic or title, you can just easily change the duration and it's gonna automatically fit that scene. Or you can change the text, the sizing, the positioning, the color. You can even turn off the animation in or out depending on what you need. There's just so much flexibility with Motion VFX's motion graphics and titles. So that's why I really think they help with the whole editing process and just speeding that up because back in the day if I was to go and jump into After Effects and create these all by hand it would take me the whole day. And the last reason why I think that I was able to edit these so fast is because of Final Cut Pro. That's right this isn't sponsored by Apple but I really love Final Cut Pro ever since I switched over to Final Cut Pro my editing has just become so much faster it doesn't crash on me ever and the export times are so fast and even while you're exporting one vlog you can start already editing the next project. So having Final Cut Pro has really sped up my whole editing workflow. So there you go. That is my complete workflow for my daily vlogs. I can't believe that today is already six out of seven daily vlogs and tomorrow I'll be filming my final daily vlog, which I'm really excited about because I'm actually gonna be heading to Helsinki and hang out with a good friend who actually was the one who inspired me to do daily vlogs. And hey, you never know, maybe we'll continue to do a whole lot more vlogs if you guys end up enjoying these videos. Robin, this is your time to shine. You get to edit this whole vlog today because I'm gonna go enjoy lunch. Let's do it. He already had his lunch break, so I'm having my lunch break after I get the work done so he can work hard. This is our system, you know? Always smooth working operation. A delicious red Thai curry. Definitely a guilty pleasure of mine, Pepsi Max. I used to be a huge fan of Coke, but it's just got so much sugar, so switch over to Pepsi Max. How about you guys? Coke, Pepsi fan, Pepsi Max, Coke Zero, Diet Coke, what's your choice of flavor? It's time to enjoy my good friend Peter's latest video. So what are we gonna buy? Mm, I don't know. Man, I miss that guy. Peter, we need to hang out sometime soon. All right, all right, back to work. That was a long enough break. It's time to do some editing. Mm -hmm. 